Hello. Okay, uh, welcome back to our YouTube channel. So, uh, please uh, click subscribe if you want to get updates of our newly uploaded videos. Uh, and click uh, the bell button. So you have regular updates of our YouTube uh, uh, videos. Okay, so today we will discuss uh, uh, how to get the properties, no, the section properties of uh, uh, steel, steel beam or column or steel sheet or any other uh, steel or timber. So if you want the section properties like the location of the neutral axis, the moment of inertia, uh, the radii of generation, and the section modu modulus or the section moduli. Okay, so have, let's have this uh, problem. So, very simple, compute the properties of steel section shown. Well, this can also be a wooden section or any other shape for that, for that manner. It doesn't matter uh, whatever shape it is. Okay, so we have here a steel section. Uh, the flange width is 200 mm. The flange thickness is 24. And then the overall depth is 300 mm. And the thickness of the web is 20 mm. Okay, let's solve this in two ways. One is the usual, uh, I call it manual or traditional solution where we compute the areas of each uh, uh, part and then using Varignon's, uh, Varignon's theorem and transfer formula. The other part is the same principle but using calculator, using the statistics mode, which is more convenient. All right. Okay, so we have here the section. So first, we will divide the section into subparts. Okay, sub areas of known area and centroid. Situate that you know the centroid and the areas. Well, obviously, it will be rectangle. So one rectangle for the flange and another rectangle for the web. Okay. So let's call the flange as area one with the centroid here. And uh, web as area two, again, centroid jet. So area one and area two, okay? And then the centroids of each, the location, let's measure it from the bottom. It's at the bottom of the section as our reference. So how much is this distance to the centroid? So this is 300 minus one half of 24. So 300 minus 12. So that's uh, 288. Okay, while this one here, uh, let's compute first the depth of the web. The depth of the web is 300 minus 24, that's 276. So that your area two, the centroid is one half of 276 measured from the bottom. So that's 138 mm. Okay, so let's compute the area. So we have area one is equal to 200 by 24. Okay, 4,800. And then area two is uh, 276 times 20. So that's 5,520. So the total area of the section is area one plus area two. Okay, so that's 10,320 square mm. Okay, so the next step, let's compute the... Okay, let's locate the neutral axis, this one. The location of the neutral axis. So I have here my uh, areas, one, two, okay, the centroids. All right, so to compute that, we will use the Varignon's theorem. Okay, so the theorem states that the centroid of, okay, the resultant, okay, the moment of the resultant quantity about any line or about any point equals the moment of the individual quantities about the same point. The quantity can be force, can be area, can be volume. In this case, area, we will ha we'll have it as the area. Okay? So let's take moment at the bottom of the section. So that will be the moment of the total area at the bottom. That will be total area times Y and A equals the moment of area one from the bottom, that, that will be area one times y1, plus area two times y2. So that's the Varignon's theorem. Varignon's theorem. 
moment of the total area at the bottom equals the sum of the moments of area 1 and area 2 at the bottom, the same reference point. So we substitute the values that we computed earlier. So we have the bar Y or YNA as 207.8 mm from the bottom of the section. Okay, so that's uh, 207.8. Now, finally, Pukunin natin, uh, let's compute the moment of inertia about X. So we will transfer the moment of inertia because each section, the centroids are at a distance from the neutral axis. So you will transfer, you need to transfer that. So we need to compute the distances of each area to the new location of the centroid. So let's call this uh, D1 and of course this will be 80.2. That is 288 minus YNA. 288 minus 207.8, that's 80.2. While this one, let's call this D2, this is YNA, so 207.8 minus 138, so that's 69.8 mm. Okay? So this is the transfer formula for moment of inertia. That will be summation because we have two areas here. IG of the area plus the transfer area times distance squared. Okay, let's start with area 1. The IG of area 1 is 200 BD cube over 12. Rectangular yung shape. 200 by 24 cube over 12 plus area 1 D1 squared. Okay, this is it. This is for the first area. For the second area, that will be BD cube. So 20 by 276 cube over 12 plus area 2 times 69.8 squared. The distance D2. So, okay, so that solves us the moment of inertia IX. That's the centroidal moment of inertia along the X axis. Next, the radius of gyration RX. That is the square root of IX divided by the total area. So, very simple, substitute the values. So, you have it as 94.95 mm. Then the section modulus. So notice this is asymmetrical with respect to X. So there will be two section moduli. All right? Let's do have the section modulus is I over Y or I over C. Okay? So for the section moduli for the top fiber, so let's call it uh, Y top, this one here. So the Y or the C is uh, 92.2. That's 300 minus Y and A. That's 92.2. So the section modulus for that will be SX top is IX divided by Y top or C top, 92.2. So that's 1009 times 10 to the third power. Okay? And then the SX for the bottom fiber, so SX bottom, so we will use YNA for our C. So I over YNA. So the, the C natin is... Uh, 207.8. Okay? Alright. Then your moment of inertia in the Y axis. So this is much easier because we don't need to transfer. Because you notice that the two centroids is along the Y axis itself. So no need to transfer. Or the distance, transfer distance is zero. So we have IY consists of the flange which is D, 24 by 200 cube over 12, plus the web, which is 276 by 20 cube over 12. So that gives you 16.88. Right? So D, B cube over 12. Ito naman. So 276 by 20 cube over 12. Then the radius of duration RY will be IY, square root of IY over total area. That is 39.6. Then the section moduli, there's only one because this is symmetrical with respect to Y. There's only one extreme fiber. So that will be IY divided by half of 200 or IY over 100. That gives you 161.8 mm cube. Okay? So we use the basic. Now, you can solve this fast by the same principle, but we will use the statistics mode of our calculator. So if you have this calculator, 991 or 570, 
you press mode 3, 2. Mode start and then the uh, linear line, AX plus B. Then you have, you take, make sure that your frequency is turned on. So this is the table that you can see. Okay. In the frequency, we will input there the area. In the Y, the centroid. The Y is here. Uh, that is Y1 and the Y2. And in the X, we will input the ratio of the moment of inertia to the total area, I over A. Now, in the case of rectangular, because these are rectangular sections, na? so the I over A of a rectangle, you, the I of a rectangle is BD cubed over 12. The area is BD. So that becomes D squared over 12. So you can use that formula if you have rectangular section. D squared over 12. All right. Let's have the area one first. The depth, okay, we will do IX. Anyway, huh? we will do IX. The depth perpendicular to IX is 24. So this will be 24 over 12, right? The centroid of that, that is your Y1, 288. And then the frequency is the area. That's 200 by 24. 200 by 24. For area 2, the depth perpendicular to X is 276 cubed over 12. The Y is one half of yun, centroid niya, 138. And then the area is 276 by 20. Okay? So very simple. The table is very easy to fill in. And then, okay, this is how will it look like after you have computed that, inputted that in your calculator. These are the values that you will see. Okay. Now, to get the value of bar y, the neutral axis, all right, the stroke is shift, you press shift button and then uh, statistics, then you will see this. And then you choose bar number four, and then you will see this. And then you choose bar y number five, okay, that will give you the value of bar y. 207.78, the same value that we got from here. Okay, and then the moment of inertia. So for the moment of inertia, you will be doing these strokes here. Okay, let me guide you. First, shift start. Okay, shift, and then you press start. This is how you do it. Okay, a shift and then stop. Uh, let me show you how to do it from the beginning. Okay. Uh, sorry. Mode 3 and then 2. Then you input the values. Okay. 24 squared over 12. Then the bottom is 276 squared over 12. Okay. And then the Y is 288 and then 138. And then the frequency is uh, 200 times 24 and then 276 times 20. Okay, so that is now stored. And then if you want the location of the centroid, press AC, shift, start, and then four bar, and then five bar Y. Then equals 207.76. Okay, and then if you want the moment of inertia, so you have first summation of summation of uh, IG. So that is shift start uh, sum three and then summation X two. Okay, you will get this one. And then plus the next uh, is N. Okay, shift start and then var four and then N is one. Okay, you have that. Then sigma y, shift start again, and then var, and then sigma y, 6, and then square. Yun. And then press equal sign, and you will get the moment of inertia ix. This is it. 93.04 times 10 to the 6. Okay? You get it? So... Uh, I hope you got the procedure and I hope you learned from this video.
We're so excited uh, making this video. This will help you, especially this time of lockdown, those who are planning to take the review. Well, our review is more detailed, of course, uh, in the review. These are just uh, selected principles, but of course, I know you will learn from this. All right? So please follow our, uh, uh, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, in our uh, channel and click the bell button so that you will be alarmed of our new uploaded videos. Okay, thank you so much.